The week I've spent with this Fiat Bravo turbo diesel in Europe underscores both the possibilities and the challenges inherent in the Fiat Chrysler merger. Achieving significant economies of scale was considered one of the main reasons for the tie-up, and figuring out what would appeal to Americans and what to leave behind was essential. My Fiat is a fair representation of the average European's car, both in size and specification. Being a hatch, it takes up less space when parking, critical in congested continental cities, yet is roomy inside for four and their luggage. And it's much better looking, at least to someone from our side of the Atlantic, than many of its oddly shaped competitors that you see over here. The choice of fabrics and moldings, such as the checked fascia, non-textured dash top, and the metallic effect upholstery is fun, if a bit daring for mainstream America but the build quality lags behind the best available cars in the States. And when you start it up, the racket its direct injected 1.9 liter turbo diesel engine makes would put many off. The Bravo is a relaxed, pleasing car to drive, even at six figure speeds. Engine noise is muted, there's lots of low end torque, the six speed manual gearbox is sweet, and the ride handling trade off is very well done. The Bravo handles bumpy French back roads without getting unsettled and hustled through the testing mountain passes on the Spanish border with Alain. Mileage is remarkable too. I averaged 35 to 40 miles per gallon while zipping along at close to 100 miles an hour and got similar numbers in town. While that's something many of our smaller cars are rated at by the EPA, many don't actually achieve it. And not having to listen to the bovine-like mooing noises of a typical hybrid was quite a relief. But most Americans wouldn't want to shift for themselves, even with a gearbox as nice as the Bravos. So the twin-clutch automated manual Fiat Chrysler is bringing to market in the U.S. makes sense for an engine such as this. You can see that the company's designers and management have learned their lessons well. The Dodge Dart, which uses a newer, larger chassis related to the Bravos, shares its enthusiasm for corners, good refinement and ride, and directness of steering. Yet the Dart is also much larger and of higher quality inside, and has oodles of the kind of standard equipment and cool technology that the Korean companies have used to lure stateside buyers for years. By combining many of the best continental virtues with the sense of value that Americans expect, Fiat Chrysler has begun to thrive. Experts give their cars great reviews and sales are terrific. And while the Bravo wouldn't necessarily be my first choice to drive across to America, it's been a great way to see multiple countries throughout Europe. From Bordeaux, France, I'm Isaac Bouchard for Autoline Daily.